Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. It is 27 degrees this morning. We're sitting in a 2013 Toyota Sienna in need of some rear brakes. So first thing we wanna do, jack the vehicle up, put it on jack stands and take that tire off. I'll meet you out there. Once you have the tire off, what I like to do is take a flathead screwdriver, put it in between the caliper and the rotor and pull, let's see if I can get it to do it, and pull the caliper over towards you and that's sucking that piston in. Let's do it all the way as far as you can go until it bottoms out like that. And that pushes the piston in most of the way. Now to pull the caliper off, it's two 14 millimeter bolts. Once they're cracked loose, usually you can get them just with your fingers. If not, keep using the ratchet, pull them off. All right, and then this can just set up and over. It's nice and light, it's just aluminum. Just set it there for now. Now we wanna pull our bracket off. That's held on by two 17 millimeter bolts in the back. Gonna take a little more force to break these loose. And for these, I'm just gonna use an electric ratchet to buzz them off just for speed. And then hold the bracket while you pull off the second one. All right, and this can come off. Then we can just knock the brake pads out. There's one, there's two. And then on the bracket, we also have these little hardware clips. We can pop those off. Should be four of them. And then in where the, that hardware was sitting, right in these grooves, we just wanna clean those off the best we can. You can just take a flat screwdriver or a wire brush and just get that nice and clean. All right, and then we'll pop these off, these slide pins. They just come out of the boot like that. And then we'll wipe this off and apply new grease. It's not a petroleum-based grease, but it's special caliper grease. So we'll just apply a new light coating on the pin. And then we'll pop it back in. I like to twist it as it goes in. Do that with the second one. I like doing them one at a time because there is a top and a bottom. This one's different. It has that little uh, rubber ring around it so that goes in a certain spot so by doing one at a time i don't uh, mix up which one goes where and then same thing put it in twist it and while we're messing with the bracket we might as well just go ahead and put the new clips in they only go on one way so we'll just snap those in place all right so now our caliper bracket is ready to be installed once we get to that point we're going to be replacing the rotor as well hammer and just give it a good tap. When you hit on the rotor, just be careful not to nick your wheel studs. Because we're replacing it, you can even hit on the rim. That's okay if you damage this because it's getting a new one. So whatever you feel comfortable with. And also make sure that your parking brake is off because the parking brake shoes are under this rotor hat. So if they're applied, then this won't come off. Couple of hits. You can see the shoes here for the parking brake. What you could do is take some brake clean and clean off your parking brake. Now is a good time if these pads on your parking brake are low to go ahead and change them while we're in here. Uh, these look just fine, so we're not going to need to do that this time around. Once you have this surface cleaned off here, that's your wheel hub. I like to apply a little bit of anti-seize, some kind of corrosion inhibitor. This is fluid film. It's kind of expensive stuff. I use it on a lot of brakes. I do a lot of brakes. I love this stuff because it's easy to apply. If you don't have anything like this, a little bit of anti-seize is okay. Just don't get it on your wheel studs, but just right here on the hub, a nice light, super light film of anti-seize. Just gonna apply a little of this. Now your new rotors come with a corrosion inhibitor from the factory just so it doesn't rust during storage. You wanna take some brake clean, spray it off real good, wipe it down really good. Otherwise your brakes will smoke and smell as that inhibitor burns off. So we just wanna clean off as much as we can before installation. Now on the wheel hub, there are witness marks where these little screw holes went. So I'm gonna line it up the exact same way. 
as it was before. Okay, there we go. Also on the old rotor, there's this little rubber grommet. We're gonna pop out of the old rotor and put it right here on the new rotor. You can take a little screwdriver to kind of squish it in. There we go. Just make sure it's in there. Okay, rotor's in. Go ahead and put our caliper bracket on. All right, now we just wanna make sure that none of these clips are hitting or rubbing on the rotor. Otherwise, that'll make a nice high-pitched squeak noise. We don't want that with our new brakes. Now with these pads, you have to install the little wear indicator. So if you look at how this is gonna go on, the wear indicator goes on the bottom. We're just gonna install it on the bottom like that. Just clips in. Yours might be different though. I think each manufacturer does it a little different. This one's going on the back side. So you wanna install it again on the bottom. Okay, and then we can push this all the way down. There we go. So these brake pads, you can kind of see how they go in. They have to go in at an angle and then twist. And then the top just slides in. So you should have plenty of room for sliding. And you should be able to slide it freely without it binding up. Okay, those are in. Now we can put our caliper on. Before we put the caliper on, even though we push that piston back most of the way, it still needs to go just a little bit more. So I'll show you how to do that. Now you can get these kits pretty cheap from Amazon, right around 20, 25 bucks. I've had this one for a while. It's got dirt and debris all in it. So we're gonna take the right hand one. And this is just one option. I'll show you another way as well. Take the right hand one along with this. That kind of goes in like that. And then we'll want uh, this one over here looks like this. So now on the caliper, you put the tool in this way where this plate is against the outer part of the caliper and then that disc is against the piston. Now, as we turn, it's gonna be pushing in that piston. So that's one way of doing it, pretty easy. This kit can seem like a little bit of overkill because it does practically every vehicle on the market. This up here is a picture of another kind, also a valid way of doing it. Because this piston doesn't have to go in very far, you could also just use a pair of C-clamps like this, and it just goes in inside the piston like that, and you just squeeze it tight, push it in. So lots of different ways. But because we did the screwdriver method at the beginning, it doesn't really have to go in very far. Once we got it pushed in, we'll put it back over our brakes. Make sure that your brake hose isn't kinked at all. Put our bolts back in. All right, torque specs. The big caliper bracket bolts are 65 foot-pounds, and these little caliper bolts are 20 foot-pounds. All right, there we go. This side is done. The other side is done the exact same way. What I like to do before going to the other side is putting the tire on, lowering it, and pumping those brakes up to get that pedal nice and firm again before going to the other side. And then when that side is done, again, put the tire on, lower it, Pump up those brakes so your pedal is nice and firm before you go take it on a test drive. All right, there you go. That's how you can replace rear brakes on a 2013 Toyota Sienna. Now this spans over a few years. I'll try to do some research, find out what years this applies to and post it in the description or the title of this vi uh, video. Now as far as breaking in your new brakes, what you wanna do is take it up to about 30, 35 miles an hour and then apply a good amount of pressure to come to a nice solid stop and then we'll let off the brakes, come up to about 30, 35 again, and then good, nice, solid stop on those brakes. We'll do that about four or five times. Now we don't wanna lock the brakes up, but we do wanna to come to a nice, secure, solid stop. So with that said, just make sure no one's behind you, uh, that you're doing this in a safe manner. After that, you should be good to go. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, see you on the next one.